Outer Worlds is the first big, huge open world RPG Fallout killer hype bomb made by Obsidian Entertainment. People who are fans of Fallout New Vegas or literally anything else they've ever worked on under the shadow of a now greedy mega corporation makes a game about greedy mega corporations. Anyone who saw this setting coming, please raise your hands. You are a chosen one hero by this one scientist guy who tells you that you're the only hope for hundreds of thousands of people sitting in a massive grave in the middle of space from just being space junk forever. You go on an extremely slow journey of making connections and talking to people face to face, a la any RPG with a dialogue system since 2001, you get your ship, get your crew, and venture through space to follow the clues to get the MacGuffin. All in all, not bad, really. It's enough to drive a desire to get to know the rest of the universe. When you have a theme of dystopian future this strong, you want to know more about it. The problem with this is that it's mostly one note. In Outer Worlds, the only motivation for anything is cold, hard cash sort of makes the entire thing have less depth when you think about it. Also, I'm docking points for a game that isn't a mobile game having this many goddamn advertisements. I can't believe a game that isn't trying to sell me something I can actually buy is shouting slogans this often. It's not just the retrofuturism of Fallout. It's full-on indentured servitude and people who have mascots grafted their heads permanently. I'm sick of hearing the Spacer's Choice slogan more than I'm sick of hearing freecreditreport.com jingles. I could have seen this coming at me like an atom bomb. There's a decent amount of playfulness in the tone the designers give the game. I can at least appreciate that. The visual design carries this theme very well, and the style begets the idea that things are made as cheaply and affordable as possible. From guns made out of carved wood, not because it makes them fancier and flashier, but because they're cheaper to make. The samey armor even has the in-universe excuse that it's all manufactured by the same company, and then sold to other companies to put their logos and colors on. That said, I know a lazy reuse of assets when I see it, Come on. The levels and the environments begin to also be very samey. You can chalk this up to the same in-world excuse, but that doesn't make the game any less bland. What you do have is some decently made houses that are refabbed everywhere. Cool mycology, nice fauna, but it's not much to really talk about. And like I said, the jingles just get stuck in your head. I hate that the sound design is so well done. Everything just stays in your brain. The company mantras that you have to repeat at your own bullshit job in real life get spewed to you constantly in this game. I don't know about you, but I play games for escapism mostly, and holy hell, I am not jiving on this. It gives me a panic attack just walking around listening to it. So, when I heard about this game, all anyone could say about it is how it was going to kill Fallout 4. How it was going to be so much better in every way. And I just have to say, if you still believe the hype like this, you're an idiot. Bar none. This game, if you wanted to know, feels more akin to Mass Effect or Bioshock or Knights of the Old Republic. A game I would not compare this to is anything in the Fallout universe. <sighs> Let's get into the gameplay, where things really start to annoy me. Yeah start to annoy me. Everything I've said so far is a design choice that while I believe is done in poor taste, is still decently well executed. Speaking of well executed, actually I'm gonna separate some notable examples here before I get down to the nitty gritty bad stuff. Here's what the gameplay does right. The game features a bunch of small playgrounds instead of one large open world that's impossible to walk across. The companions are centric to the story in a way that reminds me of something extremely like Mass Effect's depth. Characters feel like they live their own lives and are genuine people. They aren't here for you. They have their own problems. And there is the option to go it alone if you absolutely want to. The caveat here is again, to not think of it how Fallout does companions. Last but not least, every single skill gives you benefits outside their normally expected use in an RPG. So the game can let you do your thing without your build becoming way too focused. On to the bad list, the non-centered cursor is extremely off-putting and is completely unnecessary. I don't understand this choice on any level. It's about five to 10% of the way down the screen. Why? There's no option to lock gear that you like so you don't accidentally get rid of it while trying new things or swapping stuff on teammates. Actually, trying to organize your inventory isn't really viable at all. Consumables are weird to manage because of this, but in the end, they mostly just serve as flavor text anyway. A lot of them do the same thing. Eh, despite being 
well written, and well polished, the entire game has a pacing to it that feels stilted and not exciting. From combat, to companion interactions on the ship, to random encounters and events, dialogues, you find yourself brought out of things by just how much there is to loot and grab. And it's just choppy and awkward. On top of that, the supernova difficulty doesn't really fit in a game like this. Having permanent companion death is too high of a drawback in a story focused game, and it forces you to play alone if you want to succeed. Even if I wanted to have the survival mechanics that aren't terribly balanced here, it's just a headache to play on this mode. Customizable difficulties would be way better, but Here's the big one. There's Mark II versions of items, and this completely ruins the game's upgrade and progression system. Whoever thought this was a good idea needs to be fired on the spot. This is the worst thing about the game, and alone is a good enough reason to stop playing. When you don't have satisfying progression in your RPG, if you undermine it, it's Pointless. I know I've said a lot of bad things about this game, but I played this game on the Xbox Game Pass for PC for like a dollar. So what enjoyment I got out of it was well beyond worth the money I spent on it. I then went on to play other games like Metro Exodus and my other video on Halo Reach for exactly the same cost. So take that as you will. But look, let me be real here as I finish up. I couldn't finish this game. It was just too grating. I know a well-made RPG when I see it. And this almost, almost, barely makes it into the cut, but it drops the ball in so many ways that add up to an experience that I don't want. I can't convince myself I'm having fun in an amusement park like Ride, or that I'm in this universe and enjoying my sense of justice that I'm bringing to it in some weird abstract way that all fantasy RPGs give you. It's oppressive, the tone, it's too much. And maybe it's just me, but I can't stand to keep going. I'm going to take a sec to say, uh, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, like this video, uh, just a little would go a long way for me. And I know it's been a while since I made a video, I'm hoping that with this I can get back into the groove a little. I'm thinking about doing some restructuring and just making some videos that are more fun little things instead of just reviews. It's a process, but I just wanted to give you all a heads up. Thank you to all my artist friends for helping me so far along this journey. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.